Hey folks, before I get rolling on this video, there's just a couple of things I've been meaning to address. Uh, quite often I have folks that ask questions or leave really nice comments and when I go to respond to them, there's just no reply tab visible. It'll often say linked comment. I don't know what that means and I don't know why there is no reply tab. I have someone who signs his uh, replies with the name of Vinny, leaves a lot of really nice comments, but when I go to respond to him, I'm just unable to. Uh, I don't know if there's something in the settings that needs to be changed. I really have no idea why. Uh, but Vinny, I want to thank you for all the kind words. Uh, you've probably been wondering why I respond to everybody else and not you. Um, it's just because when I go to respond, there's just no reply tab, and I really don't know why. Now, I always do my best to respond to everyone and answer everybody's questions. So if you leave a comment or a question and you're not hearing back from me, it's simply because I'm unable to do so. Well, winter's definitely upon us now. Uh, we've had several nights in the 15 to 18 below zero range. Uh, it's been pretty frosty. Then we just got dumped on with snow. The snow's up to my knees now, but it's real powdery snow. Really pretty out here. Everything's sparkling. Lots of bird activity at the feeder. Uh, the homestead's just a nice place to be right now. Um, I'm gonna be here for a bit. Uh, I've been uh, acquiring quite a few different pieces of cast iron. Some of it's been pretty neglected. I'm going to do some restorations on that. And I want to uh, give you an update on that pan, that rusty old pan that I restored in my other video there. It's just turned out to be just a fabulous piece of cookware. I turned this rusty old relic right into just a nice implement for the kitchen. Uh, I've been acquiring all this other iron because I want to equip the New Hampshire cabin with. I want to show you those pieces and uh, I want to show you this little gem that I picked up. This beautiful old waffle iron here. I'm going to uh, show you that, show you the restoration process and then pump out a few waffles for you. So let's get rolling on that. Look at this little gem here. A waffle iron. Circa 1925. It's a Montgomery Wards. Montgomery Wards Ironware. Yeah, I've only seen one of these in my life, and this thing is mint. Yeah, isn't this incredible? The vintage Montgomery Wards Ironware was made by Wagner. Wagner's been around for a long time. Wagner and Griswold, that's uh, two brands of ironware that uh, will really retain its value. Some really good stuff. Um, you'll see quite a few of these Wagner waffle irons out there, but generally uh, the ones you find are in pretty poor condition. I've only seen one of these before that had the Montgomery Wards label on it. Uh, this one here was a real gem. It was in really good shape. As you can see, it was brought right back to the bare iron. And now I'm going to bring it forward and season it to the way that I prefer. We're going to have one heck of a nice waffle iron out of this thing. Beautiful piece of work right there, man. Yes, sir. I have this on a medium heat here. So I'm just taking a rag that's saturated with olive oil. And when I do this... It weeps down into the pores down there. What I'm trying to do is work in very, very light coats of oil. Let it get absorbed. Then another light coat over and over and over that process. Now never try and rush this process. It's called seasoning for a reason. Things that are well seasoned got that way over time. Um, trying to apply heavy coats and rush the process is just going to result in sticky pans, and sticky pans are not any fun at all to work with. Anytime I see little puddles like that, those drips, this is a, a rag that's 
fairly dry and I'm going to wipe off any of those areas that are heavy in dripping. Now if you leave little puddles, little streaks, little drips on there to dry, you will build an uneven coating of seasoning on here and eventually your pan will be sticky. Now I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to keep doing that and I'm going to do several processes like this and then I will put it in the oven for a while. This is saturated with oil. See, just add a sheen to it. And that's it. Well, a lot of you folks might watch other videos on cast iron and see other people applying oil a lot heavier than I do. I'm certainly not knocking anyone else's technique. All I'm doing here is showing you the way that I do it and I get really good results from the method that I use. And I'm just sharing that with you. Um, but you will see here, we've taken this old waffle iron that was taken right back to the bare iron. I'm applying oil no heavier than what you're seeing me do with my oily rag. I'm using a pastry brush to distribute it all through the nooks and crannies of the waffle iron. And I'm going to do probably two dozen coats right here on the stove top. I really like the stove top method because I can apply several coats in the amount of time that it would take me to do one cycle in the oven. Now you will see me take this piece of ironware that was right from the bare iron and bring it right straight forward to a wonderful non-stick surface and hopefully I'll pop out some really nice waffles for you so you can see the result from what I'm doing here. Now this is the pan that I restored in part two of my cast iron video. This is that pan that was all rusty. As you can see, the handle hasn't turned black like the cooking surface has. Um, you can see how it's just got a beautiful carbonized coating here. Now that's not oily at all. You see my fingers, there's no residue, no residue really on there at all. Now that's got a nice buildup of carbonized layers of oil there. It's a beautiful non-stick surface now. So it's come a long way from that rusty pan to this. So you can just tell that that is just a beautiful non-stick surface right there. Yeah, and that was achieved just by very, very thin coats of olive oil. And I always wipe away the excess before I put it away. And it's a beautiful pan now. It went from that rusty junk that someone threw away to a just a beautiful implement for the kitchen. Yeah. Now here's just some of the cookware that I recently picked up. Uh, some of these are good old Wagner pans. Um, these have been abused. A lot of these are caked with crud. As you can see, some, some rust in here. Um, some have been overheated. They have a little bit of wobble to them. Now, when they have a wobble to them like that, um, they're not good for collectors at all. But they'll make good cookware for me, like out on a campfire and things like that, where I, I won't want to bring my good pans. Now, like this big old pan here, this is a Wagner as well. A big pan like that in mint condition would bring a lot of money. Uh, the Griswolds in the Wagners of that size, when they're in good shape, would bring anywhere from $75 to $100. But it's been abused. It's been scratched all to hell. Uh, somebody's gone at this with a steel brush. Um, it's just too bad. And they're, they're all caked with crap, you know. But... I'm going to restore these here, and then I will show them again in another video. Now, I'm not going to bother filming the process of the restoration, because I'm going to be following the same steps that I showed in part two of this video, where I was restoring that rusty old fry pan. Look at that, huh? <laughs> 
Now I want to take a second here and talk a little bit about oils. As you already know, what I use is olive oil and I highly recommend it. In the past, I used vegetable oils and canola oils and things like that because that's what I was taught. Um, when I switched over to olive oil, it was a night and day difference. My pans are no longer sticky. The seasoning process is just fabulous. Um, I think it was a good demonstration with that waffle iron. Those waffles popped right out of there, and that iron will get better over time as that seasoning builds up. Now, if I were to be cooking a stir-fry or sautéing shrimp or something like that, I would always use an olive oil for that process. But when cooking a food that tends to adhere to the pan, especially like with these waffles with all those little nooks and crannies in there that food would stick to, um, I prefer to use a heavier oil, and here today I use the canola oil for that. It kind of explains why the heavier oils don't work as good for the seasoning process. And the reason is the heavier oils tend to coat the iron rather than be absorbed by the iron like the olive oil does. The olive oil is nice and light. It disperses quick, tends to be absorbed by the iron. That way when I pour in the batter, it doesn't have the slippery coating that I get with the heavier oil. So. The different oils do have a place in my home, but the olive oil is what I will always use for the seasoning process, and the heavier oil is what I'll use on like this waffle iron or from cooking a food that tends to stick to the pan more. Now that's just a little tidbit of information for you. In case you go to make some waffles, you're finding that they're sticking to the pan, just switch to a heavier oil for that, and you'll probably have much better results. Now in between uses, I'm just going to give it a little brushing with the canola oil. Look at that thing. Waffle number three. Mops right out. Beautiful. Now that pan has got a beautiful seasoning to it. Nothing at all stuck to that iron. Look at these waffles, man. Look at that. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. Nothing stuck. Huh? What a gem. Now that right there certainly beats the frozen varieties, I can tell you that. <laughs>